Have you ever felt like you are in a battle? The enemy is attacking you from the right and left? Well, today we're going to be studying on preparing for battle. So I encourage you to get your notepads and your, uh, your Bible so that you can take some notes today. And with me, joining me today is Faye Ricchetti from Showers of Grace and Mercy uh, Ministries. Mercy and Grace. Mercy and Grace Ministries. And she's been in ministry for over 40 years. And um, uh, I am privileged to have known her all my life. She was my district youth leader. Welcome, Sister Faye. So Thank thankful you. and honored for you to be here today. But before we get started today, I just want to send a shout out to a couple of our viewers that have contacted me. Ms. Evans from Smithville, Tennessee, and Ann Zarl from Homewall, Tennessee. Thank you for watching and thank you for con contacting us. We just enjoy it so much when you email us and let us know that you're receiving from the Word of God and, and, and what God has us doing today. Amen, Sister Faye? Amen. So, Amen. Sister Faye, you want to share a little bit of, you know, about your ministry before we get started? Well, my ministry is reaches out to those that want a closer walk with God. Mm -hmm. And mercy and grace is every day. Mm -hmm. The Lord, it's, it's free from the Lord. There's nothing, yes. nothing that would stop His mercy and grace from us. And it doesn't, I, I just, uh, I had a, another name for my ministry for years. But I was sitting in church and I heard this song and I knew that God was uh, going to give me a new name. Mm -hmm. And when I heard something about mercy and grace, mm -hmm. the showers, Amen. and it was just like, you just know it clicked. Right. And, uh, and I know you know what I'm talking yes, about. Yes, yes. So that's, that's the new name. It the just resonated in your spirit. It yes. sure did. Amen. Because I know with my walk with the Lord all these years, His mercy and grace, I would not be here right. if it was not for that. Because there are times, you know, all of us are, get like children sometimes, mm -hmm. and, but His mercy and grace covers it all, Amen. and it's free. It, there's, you don't, there, He doesn't give you a list, you gotta do this, you gotta do that, before I will give you mercy and grace. Right. It's there every day. Amen. You know, too many, uh, the in, too many times the enemy, uh, Faye, uh, will tell someone, well, you, you're not good enough. Um, you've got to get cleaned up before you go to church. That's not the case. Mm -hmm. God loves you know, us all so much that, you know, that mercy and grace is there waiting for you. And he, yes. all he wants to do is love us and put his arms around us mm -hmm. and just, you know, welcome us into the fold. Amen? Amen. And another... Uh, ministry that I had, I used to minister to abused women mm -hmm. and they need to know that someone does care. Someone does love yes. them. Jesus loves them without a long list of you got to do this, you got to do that. Right. Just come unto me Amen. and to build their self-esteem back up. Um, and because I went through a, a abusive first marriage uh, and it almost cost me my life. Mm. So I reach. I want to reach out to the hurting, Amen. Whether they're women or men, Amen. And, uh, but that mercy and grace covers. Co uh, it's there. Yes, co covers a multitude of it sin. Does. Does it does. Amen. Yes, it does. Well, we all go through battles, and that's why today, for our, uh, our topic this week, we want to talk about preparing for battle. There's some things that we need to learn to do in how to prepare for battle. And one of the most famous stories in the Bible, you're all familiar with this, and it's not just for children. Of course, it's in, found, um, the text that I'm going to be coming from is from 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, the story of David when, when he comes against Goliath. The things that he had to prepare for, um, that God prepared him in order to attack the enemy. Amen? Amen. So, Sister Faye, do you have some uh, scriptures you want to start off with? I know the very first, let me read one scripture before you start. Um, it's where Saul is looking for someone because all the other soldiers had turned and run in fear. Sometimes we, we do have fear rise up in mm -hmm. us when those hard times come. Sometimes when those battles come, we have fear. But, you know, we have within us the power and the authority to cast down that fear. The Word of God says, perfect love casteth out all fear. 
And when we stand upon that scripture, sometimes fear rises up in me. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll be honest. But, you know, I speak the word and push that fear down and the love of Jesus just comes out. But I want to read this one scripture and then I'll let you get us started, okay? Mm -hmm. In 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, the 12th verse, and he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and withal of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise and anoint him, for this is he. This, uh, this is Saul. He had seen all the brothers except David. And he had asked, he said, Is this all your children? And uh, he said, No, I've, I've got one working and attending the shepherd, the sheep, sheep out in the field. So he goes and has him come in. But as soon as he walks him in, he, Samuel, he knew that this was the one, didn't he, Sister Faith? Yes, he did. Amen. Verse 13, Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. I'm going to stop there because um, I believe uh, that to when uh, he was anointed, David went back out into the field to tend the sheep. And I believe during that time, the Lord was preparing him, even though the battle was quickly coming. Mm -hmm. um, there's things, uh, some analogies that we can deal with, with tending sheep and how God can teach us some things and listening to the voice. What, what does the scripture say? Uh, uh, my sheep know my voice. Oh, and they, A amen. So we've them. got to learn these things. We've got to, uh, the pastor uh, where the sheep were, it was used to train David, I believe, mm -hmm. and to, to listen to the voice of God. Sometimes we can be so caught up in the busyness, we can't hear the voice of God. And I believe while he was out in that pasture tending the sheep is when he heard the voice of God and God spoke to him and taught him. So you share with what, what you've, God has given you and we'll just get right into the study. All right. The scripture that I put down, it's, for the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. That's 1 Samuel 16, 7. Uh, and he does. He The outward appearance doesn't tell the real thing. Mm. It's the heart mm -hmm. that the Lord looks upon. And David, I thought of, as I read this, I thought of the different ways on how, how do we prepare, prepare mm -hmm. for battle. And I, I look back over times when I knew I was having a battle. All right, what is, what's going to be my warfare? Mm -hmm. And first of all, pray. Yes. Prayer is mm -hmm. the number one thing. Second, recognize your enemy. Mm -hmm. And then read and trust God's word because it's our sword yes. to fight the enemy. And believe what God speaks to you. And believe that he will protect and guide you. Believe that you will be the victor over your enemy and tell him so. I mean, just, you know, he's to be under our feet. Yes, amen. And that's where that. he needs to be. And let him know you are under my feet. I amen. don't fear you amen. because my father watches out, protects me. He protects me. I don't know this morning, but I <laughs> can't seem to get our words out. But believe that you will be that victor and tell him so. Do not fear your enemy. Fear will weaken you. Mm. But we do not fear your enemy. You know that God is alive and reigns over the earth and protects those who call him yes, Lord. And put on the battle armor. In Ephesians 6, starting about the 11th verse, I believe, it tells you exactly how to put that armor on and what each part of the armor does to protect you. And you know, that's well, what I put there. What I remember reading is where he tried to, uh, the king tried to put his armor on David. Mm -hmm. And I will make this clear. My ar the armor that I put on is not going to fit you. That's right. And yours is not going to fit me because we've all been through uh, different uh, training systems. So, but when we talk about the armor of God, the armor of God is a one size fit, yes, <laughs> fit all is. thing because it yes. is you know, from the top of our head to the soles, soles of, of our feet. feet. But we've got to remember uh, where he tried to get David to put his armor on. That would, that would cause him to not, I believe he wouldn't be victorious if he went ahead and put that on. Mm -hmm. David knew 
within his heart, within his spirit, that all he, what he had to do and what God had called him to do. And just think, it said he was a you know a small stature, mm -hmm. that uh, no fear was there. And mm -hmm. I just imagine when Goliath saw him, when, the, when, when your enemy sees you uh, coming at, at him with no fear, um, I believe it trembles. Sometimes at first oh, yes. they, and the enemy will laugh, thinking, well, you know, I can knock you. them down a peg mm -hmm. or two. But if we remain firm and sent up on the Word of God and uh, keep our armor on, amen? Amen. And you know, Goliath, and when I looked all this up, he was nine feet four inches tall. That is tall. <laughs> now that is a big giant. Yes. <laughs> and not only that, they, it said that because of how big that he was, mm -hmm. possibly weighed about 400 pounds. Mm -hmm. And that uh, his, some of his armor was so very heavy and even the the spears that he had was so heavy to pick up. One part, uh, one spear was uh, I think it said about 15 inches or 15. It was a very big, the spear part of it mm -hmm. was big. But uh, I, let me read this here. It okay. said, how big was Goliath? It said that Joshua said, and the Israelites had uh, once cut off Anakin, which was a giant also. And, but now, generations later, the giant Goliath from Gath has come to challenge the Israelites. He was somewhere between uh, eight to nine feet, but on others, others that I looked at, everybody said that it was nine, he was nine feet, four inches. Um, and it's strong. He may have weighed 400 pounds or more for he would take a very large per it would take a very large person to wear a helmet of brass and a coat of nail that weighed somewhere between 150 to 200 wow. pounds that's what he was wearing mm -hmm. and uh, the spear in Goliath's hand looked like the beam of a weaver's shuttle mm -hmm. about two to three inches in diameter and six feet long he was prepared for battle mm -hmm. And he was such a big guy and weighed between, the spear weighed between 15 and 20 pounds. Mm. Mm. That is a lot of weight to be carrying around to fight a battle. Well, you know, um, I'm sure Goliath was very confident. Oh, very much that, so. Because, you know, all, all the men in the army had turned and run, you know, and uh, to have no one faithful enough or strong enough to come uh, at him in battle because it, in that day it's uh, whoever won the battle the other the other side the other army served the one that won mm -hmm. and uh, but uh, we know in the story what you know what happens and that that's what excites me I love where it talks about so when it gets uh, ready for uh, battle when uh, in verse 17 and Saul said unto his servants provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me. Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen the son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is cunning and playing, a mighty valiant man, a man of war, and prudent in manners, and comely person. And the Lord is with him. That the was the key factor there. Him. The Lord was with him, Sister mm -hmm. Faye. We, uh, we need to make sure that we endeavor to renew our minds daily to pray, seek the face of God and study his word because this, this is the battle plan right That's here. You know, if, if you're going through a battle, pick up the word of God because this is the instructions. The battle plan is in God's word. And I, I, I remember a story. I'm, I'm going to get off on this right quick and we'll go back. But in, in second Chronicles where they were in battle and they sent the praise worshipers and the dancers ahead of the, the army. And their, through their praise and their worship, it confused all of the enemy. They turned on each other and fought each other. And by the time the army got there, the battle had already been won. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Isn't that something? Sometimes, sometimes we get all worked up over what if. What if? Uh, that, uh, oh, I can't do that. What if this happens? What if the enemy does this? We can't live our life on what ifs. No. But if we know the Lord is with us, Sister Faye, we are going to we're going to come out victorious, oh, aren't yeah. we? Yes, we are. And you know, David, uh, even though he was still young, he learned warfare 
from watching mm -hmm. uh, Saul because Saul would get so depressed in that and David would have to play the harp for him to, to soothe him, brew these, uh, bring his spirits back up. So he, he was learning all along some uh, military strategy mm -hmm. and because the Lord was preparing him. Exactly. He was gonna meet this giant that, uh, and, and I've studied this before, they were in the, there was a valley, a deep ravine that separated them Goliath and his army on one side of the ravine mm -hmm. and Saul and the, uh, his army on the other. Well, Goliath would come out twice a day and laugh taunt. and taunt them <laughs> twice a day. Mm -hmm. For 40 days that happened. Wow. 40 days. It literally tore the army of Saul down. Every time he started out and came out, they would run. Mm -hmm. He had wore them down. But here was this little boy, this little little man, you know. <laughs> it says, I wish they would have just said how old he was. Yeah. You know, just well, says, well, well you young, know, just, as soon as they called on him, he was ready. He was ready. He was ready to go into battle. But think about that for a moment. 40 days every day. I, every I just imagine day, twice a day. Uh, their fear kept building up and building up and building up. And until they could no longer stand it, that, that they did turn and run in fear. Mm -hmm. But uh, David, a man after God's own heart, uh, and a young man after God's own heart, uh, he was ready to do battle. Just whenever mm -hmm. the Lord said go, he was ready to go. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, you know, with that valley of Elah and between those two mountains, and it said that it was 100 yards. Well, that's the size of a football field mm -hmm. that was... Uh, separating the two. One was on one side of the mountain, one was on the other. Right. But here was this this little David came and so and all he was doing was just bringing some food uh, per his father's instructions, mm -hmm. take it to my other sons mm -hmm. and feed them. And what did they do? They jumped all over David. Mm -hmm. What are you here for? You know, constantly just, well, what, what do you want or what? Well, they soon found out right. what, why that he was, he was a chosen one. He was the Amen. chosen one, and he, from the time he was there, uh, that he was not afraid of that giant. He'd already killed Amen. a bear, already killed a lion. And, and, he, and that was preparation. It was. Know, uh, you know, for the battle, because the more uh, he, uh, God brought things across like that uh, to him to battle, he became stronger, he did. And, and we learned that that's something that uh, there are, are some battles that we're going to have to go through. You know, a lot of times we pray, Lord, take this from me, remove this from me. But uh, I have learned over the years uh, that uh, some battles are meant for us to go through in order to strengthen us, because Amen. there may be something coming up down the road that. What we learn from this battle is going to cause us to be victorious in the battle ahead. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 Praise God. It's good. And I like uh, when David's brother said, why did you come down here? Mm -hmm. And it said even the others around the brothers and that began to ask David, say, why are you even here? Mm -hmm. And then David says, is there not a cause? Mm. They just did not know what was about to take place. Yeah. Because he was even going to save their lives, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but I don't want to get ahead. But <laughs> but I but love it, it's, I it's love good. that this just makes me know. Hey, we're the victors, and you know, I'm sure his brothers might may have said something that wasn't recorded or whatever. You know how you know how family brothers and sisters can go at each other, especially a younger yes, child. Yes, yes, you know, always. Uh, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. what are you doing here? Uh, what do you think you you can yeah. do? Mm -hmm. And what do you think? Uh, possibly could have run across their mind when they found out that David was anointed to be yes. the next king. Yes. And even though he was anointed to be next king, you know, he went back out to the field Had for a time. Had to go back out to the field. But, I uh, think it's about 15 years. Something like yeah. that. And then they brought, uh, uh, he was brought back to do battle and conquer oh. the giant in their lives. Amen. Amen. That is awesome. Mm. Praise God. And uh, it said that David's words were reported to Saul, who sent for David. And mm -hmm. uh, when he had heard about David, and uh, then it had, it, he didn't know, though, that David had been anointed king in his place. 
-hmm. But David knew he was going to be protected as he had been in the past from the lion and the bear. And then that, he even took the little sheep out of the lion's mouth. Mm -hmm. You know, he he was not fearful. No, that's bravery. And well, I know, would want David on my side anytime. <laughs> anytime, yes. <laughs> In verse 21, it says, And David came to Saul and stood before him and loved him greatly. He became his armor bearer. And Saul sent to Jesse, saying, Let David, I pray thee, stand before me, for he hath found favor in my sight. Mm -hmm. Now, we can find favor in God's sight when we're doing, uh, when we're obedient to his word. Uh, sometimes, I, as I said earlier, you know, we feel like we may be incompetent. Uh, ourselves, we may be, but God works through us. Mm -hmm. uh, what does it say? Uh, the joy of the Lord, Lord is, 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 our, of strength. is our strength. Mm -hmm. And that in our weakness, He becomes strong. He Amen. Becomes strong. Because it brings glory to God. It's not glory for, it wasn't glory for David. It was for the glory of God. Amen. Praise God. And that, well, when we get on into it later, uh, we'll bring that out about mm -hmm. why mm -hmm. David was so adamant to bring that giant down. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because uh, when I got to studying Amen. this again, there were so many nuggets there that oh, I, I had know. either forgot or that I had you not. You didn't know where to start and stop. <laughs> I know it. So it, it uh, but then when... Um, one of the soldiers had heard, you know, about David. He went and told Saul, and Saul said, bring him to me. Mm -hmm. And then when he got there, David was saying, we can do this. Mm -hmm. We can take this giant, mm -hmm. you know. And it said, let no man's heart uh, fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight the Philistine. Amen. Amen. This young, young mm -hmm. boy, mm -hmm. young Probably, I'd say he's what sixteen, uh, somewhere, somewhere in there. And they said, "We can do this. Yes, yeah, we don't have to fear him. He serves a he serves a, a idol gods and that, but our God's alive. You know." Well, it kind of goes along the lines where uh, was it Joshua that said, "We're well able to conquer well this mountain." Well able to, uh, but the others, the other spies, Caleb, uh, saw themselves. They said, uh, "They see us as grasshoppers." Yeah, and I believe I. Uh, talked about this on a previous program about uh, they were operating under a, a spirit of assumption. They were assuming that the enemy saw them and uh, when the enemy ha hadn't even seen them, but they were assuming that uh, they uh, were seen as grasshoppers. Well, this army here that turned and ran, uh, they ran in fear where I believe God had um, lined everything up to a point to show the nation and to show his favor upon David, the, the up and you coming king. Right. And we need to learn to support one another. We need to learn to uh, help one another do battle. Right. Now I'm, I'm, talk, no, I'm not talking about a physical battle. All our battles can be done on our knees, you know, in prayer, uh, speaking the word of God, proclaiming the word, speak only the word. There's many times I've been in battle, Faye, that, uh, you know, I'll just get open the scripture and, and I'll, I'll read the scripture out loud and I'll place my name in the middle of that scripture and I'll declare that over my life. And mm -hmm. that's how we can do battle because the enemy doesn't care if you read the word of God, but the enemy cares when you put it into action. That's Amen. it. That's it. Um, I'd like to share something um, telling the enemy and reminding. I, my son had had, he was having open heart surgery. Mm -hmm. This has been several years ago, and I had I just felt led to go to the chapel, and when I got there, the Bible was open, and I said, Lord, it says in your word mm -hmm. that you will do this, and I need you to do this, Jesus, and then the Lord said, stand up and fight. Yes. Now, some may not believe this, but I'm here to tell you it happened. A black entity in the shape of a man like came into the chapel. And the Lord then said, I said, fight. And it was just like somebody took my arms and I was boxing like Amen. this and kickboxing. Amen. And I kept rebuking that in the name of Jesus. I said, Amen. my son is going to live. He'll not die. And you Amen. know what? At that very time, God. they told me 
that we almost lost him. And I believe it was at the very time. The precise moment. That precise moment yes. when God yes. said, stand up and fight. Yes. That's what we have to do. Don't accept what Satan puts out there. Exactly. Or when Amen. you see things going on. The best weapon you have is to pray and to read the word of God and to stand up in the face of the enemy like David did. Yes, amen. I mean, they know I'm a fighter and the devil knows I'm a fighter and you can be a amen. fighter with the word of God amen. and believing that he is your Lord. Amen. This has amen. been good. We're going to continue this over the next uh, uh, two or three weeks and uh, we want you to stay with us and watch every week on a study. But I want to encourage you today, if you're going through a battle and you need someone uh, to pray with you, email us, contact us. Yes. The information will be at the end of the, uh, the TV program. Uh, it's provided where you can contact us. We get so encouraged when we hear from you. We're so encouraged when we receive your prayer requests. And God wants you to be victorious. You can become an overcomer. Amen. Amen. Sister Faith, Amen. I mean, this word right here, we always say it's basic instructions before leaving earth. Amen. Mm -hmm. And Amen. But we must be in the word of God. We must have a prayer life. Uh, don't be afraid to call upon someone and say, hey, I'm in a battle. I need help. I need prayer today. Can you pray with me? And we will come into agreement with you and we will lift you up in prayer and you can be a mighty warrior for Christ Amen. just by speaking the word of God and share your testimonies when you when you overcome these battles, when you become victorious. Email us and let us know and share with us what God has done for you. We've over the, uh, the last uh, couple of months, we've received many uh, emails, um, prayer requests, and we've received, uh, received praise requests. And that's, that's what good. excites me because uh, you're, those of you out there watching, you're not afraid to let us know and say, hey, I need help. We all need help. We, we all need hope. And you can remain and be faithful in Christ. And you can always have hope in Christ. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He just wants you to look up to, toward him and let your petition be made known. Amen. Amen. This has been good, Sister Faye. Thank I've you so much it. for joining. Sister Faye will be with me next week. So until next time, I want you to continue to walk in love, and I want you to keep your faith. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Encounters is sponsored by Vessels of Honor Worldwide, AAA Enterprises, and the viewers. to contact Encounters, email encounterswithgod at comcast.net or write to us at 117 Sunset Place, Portland, Tennessee 37148.